There are around 40 people living here in Arthur's Pass Village. Now this community lives 737 metres above sea level, surrounded by forest and ominous mountain ranges. And it's fair to say that they're a dedicated bunch of people, keen to encourage some feathered locals back to this area. And the locals are ones they've heard but never seen. Here in Arthur's Pass we have um, the great spotted kiwi, or Roroa, and uh, we think that we've got about 18 birds through this part of the valley. Local community people, um, volunteers, go out and check stoat lines and make sure that they, uh, they're always ready. And not only do they do you know, the, both the possum control and the stoat control work, but they go out and do the kiwi call monitoring as well. Have you ever seen them? Kiwis? No, I've heard them on my front lawn, but I've never seen them. We've just got two kiwis that just live across the river and just on the other side of the railway here in front of us. We hear them almost every night. And you'd think, you know, after 47 years that you'd actually be hearing a few more. Uh, hopefully this program, you know, if it keeps on running, that it will make a difference. And have you seen a great spotted kiwi? No, no. Have I've you? heard lots of spotted kiwis. They can wake me up at night. And they're loud enough and close enough to actually wake you up. That's, that's quite something, I think. It's pretty unique. Yeah. And have you ever seen one? I haven't had the privilege of seeing one, but you have to put a bit, bit of uh, night time into it. Uh, you have to get out at night and, and wait, right, basically, is the best way. Eleanor, I've just arrived in town. Yeah. Where are my best chances of finding a kiwi? You've got almost no chance of seeing one. You can see two of them right up here, though. So if I was to find one, trip over one, say, in the bush, what, how would I know that it's a great spotted kiwi? Um, it would be a lot larger than any of the other kiwis that you may have tripped over in the past. And um, they're very shy, so the fact you've tripped over one, yeah, would probably mean it's dead. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to head out into the bush and uh, listen for kiwi calls. Uh, we take with us a compass and, and we just basically sit and if we hear a call, we take the bearing of where it came from and record the time, um, note that down. And um, over time, if we do this often enough, we start to build up a picture of where they're hanging out. We're trying to be precise about it because it, uh, it can affect where we put uh, stoke traps to protect the kiwi. Little cards here which you fill out um, and that takes all the guesswork out yeah, of what you're yeah. doing. And then we have a little map of all the, the listening spots as well. You're getting a better handle on what they're up to and where they are and, and stuff uh, just from a personal point of view. It's, it helps keep you motivated I think to look out for them. South, south, west. Yeah. Where do I put that? It's four minutes past six. Four, right. And that was a female. A female? Yeah. Because she was gargling? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> she did gargle. And will she call again? Quite possibly, yeah. Who calls first, generally? Could be either. Either? Yep. And they're basically just chatting each other up? Yep. It's quite like we will hear another one if we're quiet in the next minute or so. Is that a wee hint? Yeah. Sorry, just be quiet. Okay. And it's five past six. That's five male. past six. And that was a male? That's a male, yep. Because do they hang out in the same burrow? No. no. So... No, they'll often... They'll spend most of the year separate. So it's kind of their way of popping out at night? 